p.m. on the East Coast, and we got our second live signal from the video, so let me see if I can find this on the iPad and make sure that we've got acceptable audio. Always a tricky thing. And for some reason, it's not showing up here. Let me refresh again. Sometimes it takes a few tries. There she blows. On the East Coast. Chipmunk. And okay, I'm going to reboot. I'm going to reboot. Stand by. Hey. We are starting this puppy. We're starting this puppy up one more time, and we'll see what we have this time. And let me know in the chat if it worked. I'm going to try to refresh the the live stream here. Sometimes it takes a few tries. There she blows. Let's see what we got here. Okay, I'm going to reboot. It's I'm replaying going. from before. Let's see what we We're got. Okay. Up. All right, so the reboot worked. The reboot worked, and we've got two stunners on the screen. We got a stainless steel stunner and a titanium stunner. And I have different lighting today. Let me know if it's any better. I simply switched out the LED bulbs that were in these two soft boxes with different LED bulbs. Still not high dollar LED bulbs, but might be a little bit better. Let me know what you think. And the colors look pretty good on my my monitor as far as the realistic nature of the colors here's a close-up of the stunner and I'll tell you no matter what I do I can't seem to get the gold color to look right <laughs> I mean occasionally I'll get lucky and I'll get a photo and it'll be right but it's very tricky, very tricky. That you really have to see this gold in person to see how absolutely stunning it is. Now, speaking of stunners, Joey sent me a uh, message on Facebook of this heavily discounted platinum stunner. Now, I'm not a fan of buying platinum watches. I see it as like paying a ton of money for something that looks like stainless steel. And, of course, I'm also not a fan of buying white gold watches for the same reason. But if somebody just absolutely has to have platinum, here's one. Here's a Grand Seiko Stunner in platinum that is 48% off. Normally a $53,000 watch. It's $27,450. And on top of that, you can make an offer. You can make an offer, and it's Watchbox. The folks at Watchbox have the watch. I guess it's up in Philadelphia. I'm not sure where it is, but that's possible. So there you go, folks. If you absolutely have to have a platinum stunner, and Beauserve says, no one tell Craig about the chipmunk voice. Sorry, I check it myself. <laughs> um, Craigster's early today making up for his tardiness yesterday and also giving me time to reboot. <clears throat> so there's that. Uh, Cheat Town's in the house. <clears throat> so, this is a continuation of yesterday's show. I've done more research, and I'll tell you what, I like the original strap that comes on the, the Grand Seiko Stunner. I like the thickness of it, I like the flexibility of it, I like the look of it, and I'm tempted to buy... David bought his strap from a seller on eBay and the same seller has one that is uh, let me pull it up here same seller has one that's black leather and looks to be a nice piece I'm thinking about buying that just to have it just to have it for if I do eventually wear out this other one I'll have a strap ready to go I'm thinking about that and it's just in North Carolina free shipping so something to think about let me pull it up on the screen here and just walk you through it see it's got big scales at the part the part that you see the most which is people like that I don't really care really the scale size to tell you the truth but then it um, has smaller scales at the end and it's the same size as the one I have now 
It's not exactly the same as the one I have now because the one I have now has two keepers on it. This has one and you can see that keeper looks like it will slide back and forth. Mine has one fixed keeper and one that slides. So it is a slightly different strap, but I think David likes his and I saw his in person and it looked really good. So that might be something to pick up to have as a background, a back up. I have the feeling that you're going to use your GMT very little, <laughs> says Carlos. To me, brown matches much better with yellow gold, says Carlos. You, well, my other one had black, and it looked great. I mean, the yellow gold looks great with either. I mean, let's face it, it just pops no matter what. But, uh, yeah, it'll pop with black as well. And uh, most of my belts and my shoes, when I'm wearing a suit, most of the time I'm wearing black. When I'm wearing other clothes, I'm usually wearing brown. So, you know, it's hard to say which. I think the brown might be more versatile. I think you can wear the brown with casual and with dress. And the black is more for the dress. I think that's kind of, kind of the way I come down on it. So I think this brown, this dark brown in particular, is, is pretty versatile. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you, the GMT, if I had a subscriber that just had to have it and made a reasonable offer, I might let the GMT go. I, I, I think Carlos might be right. I don't think I'm going to be wearing it that much. I think I'm going to be mainly wearing the O2 and the Diver. The Diver, when I need something really heavy use, and the OO2 a lot of the other times. You know, when I'm going out on any kind of a business meeting, a sales call, anything like that, I'll probably be wearing the OO2 and just beating around the house and doing other stuff, the, uh, the diver, the diver stunner. Let's see, uh, you should buy it. It's always good to have spare straps, says Lance. <laughs> I can imagine Lance would say that. He, he just buys everything in sight, you know. Lance, back, pull back from the keyboard. <laughs> pull back from the buy button. <laughs> don't, don't tap the buy button. <clears throat> and Joey's in the house. Clyde likes those straps. Joey, well, does he, does he have one on something? Did he buy one of these straps? One, one of these Grand Seiko straps? Do tell, Joey. Do tell. Do share. How about trying out a blue strap? They, he, there is a seller here that has a blue one. But for me, I don't think that would make any sense because I, I think that um, it just, no. But uh, the blue would be great on the 005 because it has a blue dial. And I asked David about that. And he said he had considered it, but he kind of wanted the, um, the uh, brown to just be a little different. He thought there was too much blue going on already, but yeah, I, I think the dark blue on the 005 would be stunning. Uh, be a service in the house. Leather doesn't really match with blue. Leather doesn't really match with gold. Well, yellow gold I think goes with anything. I mean, look, it's going with this green shirt I have on it. Yellow gold is pretty freaking cool. We'll ask Brianna. Brianna it looks like she's in the house. What do you think, Bree? Does this yellow gold go with almost anything? What do you think? And can I wear it in a sporty situation like this with like a polo shirt? Can I wear it with something like this? So we were talking about the other day. Um, blue to match the second sweeping hand. There you go, Joey in the house. Craig, do you have an idea of how much you want to factor in the 9F of idea of how you want to factor in the 9F in your rotation, maybe as a summer dress watch, Gita. That's a very good question. I was thinking more like a travel watch because it's a GMT after the lockdown's over and, and we're traveling some. But, I mean, Carlos might be right. I might not be wearing it much at all. It might be on the sidelines, which is unfortunately... And uh, actually, Brie Fit Dance said Brie Fit Dance in the house, and she's got a little house. How's that? She's got a little house symbol in there. How sophisticated is that? David Williams says, hi, Craig and all. So, David, share your thoughts on the subject. What do you think?
what do you think? Do you think I'll be wearing the, uh, the 005 very much anymore? The 005 is a stunner, as you know. But my gosh, this 002 is hogging the wrist time. It's a, it's a wrist, wrist hog. And my gosh, it's so comfortable on wrist. I'm just amazed. And David, share in the chat. Is your 005 super comfortable with the strap, with the leather strap? Do share. Do share. The 9F seems like the odd one out here, especially since you aren't an air traveler. I hear, I hear you, Chi-Town. Lance, since you will buy anything, I have about a half dozen partially full bottles of cologne to talk to you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Lewis. David's in the house. And Willie is in the house. Do you cover, cover other topics? Sometimes we talk about some other things. By the way, somebody asked me about Bitcoin today. Bitcoin's pulling back a little bit. Let me see what it's at. See if I can get it to refresh here. It's always tricky on this laptop to get it to refresh. But I think it's around 8,800. Um, it was over 9,000 a couple times here recently. It's up quite a bit the last couple of weeks. I think that there could be a pullback. They asked me, will there be another opportunity to buy it cheaper? And I think it's likely it could pull back to like $8,000. I don't know that it's going to pull back any lower than that. Nobody really knows. But there could be a dip. And that might be a buying opportunity. Not financial advice on this channel, but I do love my Bitcoin. And I might, I might buy some more. So there you go. I probably absolutely will buy some more. So Eduardo says, just bought another Rolex, a mint Oyster Perpetual date. Sent you an email with pictures. It's just been shipped. Okay, we'll take a look. And Cheetown, um, what's about the Diver and Apple Watch as your two-watch rotation? Can the Apple Watch display a second time zone? I think they can. I think there, there's, a, there's possibly a... Um, a watch face that, that does a different time zone, but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe somebody can Google that. But um, but no, I think the I think the 002 in rotation with the diver is uh, is just peachy keen at this point. Um, let's see here. I put my 005 on a leather strap. I don't like the bracelet during the summer when I get sweaty. Well, that's interesting. You've got it the other way around so you're thinking you like the strap in the summer whereas David's the other way around he's wearing the the bracelet in the summer because he doesn't want the leather to get sweaty so Lewis has got it the other way around that's interesting and uh, there doesn't seem to be much more to discuss about the 002 or the gator strap says Willie in the house uh, Thanks, Cheetown. It's never been serviced or polished, to my knowledge. We're going to take a look at that. Craig, what do you think about GMT dress watches? Would you wear one? Uh, it depends on the watch. <clears throat> I'd wear like a um, a Pepsi uh, or like a, uh, a back curl as an all-arounder. So, yes, you could wear that. It's thin enough to wear as a dress watch, I think. Uh, and it could be used as an all-arounder, one-watch solution. So I vote the 002, the Diver, and the Apple Watch as a three-watch rotation, Cheat Town. Stop right there, Lance. No more buying watches. Okay, so here's the uh, latest on Bitcoin. Uh, 88, 88.28, last trade. And I think we could be looking at a pullback. And I think we could be looking at a significant pullback in the stock market here uh, this week. I, I think things could get a little bit dicey in the stock market so hold on to your hat get ready for a rocky ride things are starting to get real and we're gonna try to pull up this oyster perpetual date an oyster perpetual date stunner stand by for a stunner alert in the house well now that's interesting <clears throat> it's uh, that's interesting it's a steel and gold and it's got an oyster bracelet. That's interesting. I'm guessing, well, I guess an oyster perpetual date, I guess maybe it would have an oyster. Yeah, they probably wouldn't put a jubilee on that. 
Interesting. I don't know that that bracelet's original to that watch. It might be. It's got some engraving on it. I wonder what size that watch is. Is that 34 mil? Do tell. Do tell. That could be an all-arounder. I hope you got a good buy on it. I hope you got a good buy on it. Because it's a buyer's market right now. Uh, let's see. Um, 05 is a great watch. Quite comfortable with strap. TBH. You are a two-watch rotation guy. You don't fly, travel outside the eastern time zone. In my honest opinion, redundant for you. Will not get much wrist time. I hear you, David. I wish it would fit the lovely Brianna because we could size it for her and she could wear it, but I think it, I don't think it fits her. And she says, both of your GS watches are stunners. Well, thank you, young lady. Both meaning which two? Meaning the diver and the gold or the 005? There are three involved here. So the, boat, the word both has me a little bit confused. So do please clarify. Lewis is in the house. He says, Lance, if you want... Address GMT, then the SBGM221 is what you want. There you go. Uh, cheat down. I don't plan on buying any more cheaper watches. I actually already found a buyer for my Breitling and my tag. Good. Keep it going, Lance. Keep it going. Now, don't get ripped off. Don't get ripped off. Make sure you get your money. Um... Cheat down says, Pepsi... <clears throat> Yacht Master 40 or Batgirl would make for a one watch piece. Utilitarian like a sub, but dressy like a date chest. Yeah, and, and thinner. The sub is a little thicker, which is important. The, the, um, those pieces you just mentioned are nice and trim on the wrist, so, so they will work in a dress situation better than a sub. And let's see, Tim's in the house. He says, Lance, how did you find these buyers? Good information to know. That's good to, to ask that question. I don't get the oyster ritual date when there's the date just. Well, hopefully you get a better price on it. Hopefully that's the deal there. If it's the same price, obviously I would go for the date just. G-Town says, good job, Lance. Put the proceeds from the sales into an account and don't touch that money. You're going to designate those dollars for your first Rolex. Good, good advice. And Craig, I need advice on some gold earrings. Could I send you a photo and could Bree chime in? Yes, yes, you can send a photo and I will show it. And anybody who's watching can chime in. Hopefully she's still watching. Email me the photo. Yes, yes, yes. Trade the 005 for a watch for Brianna. Willie in the house. That, that might be a good point. Might be a very good point. Hello, Craig. I purchased my first luxury watch. Grand Seiko SBGH 281 blue dial after many many searches and watching your channel excellent can you send a photo do please share a photo I guess it's Jerry Jerry send a photo my name Craig Ship C-R-A-I-G S-H-I-P-P at gmail.com and we'll show a photo of that stunner and Joey's in the house. Give Bree your 005, Craig. I got to see if we can. I don't. I, she tried it on last time she was here, and I think it might be too big for her. But we'll take another look at that and see if it would size down enough to f go on her. Because it would be perfect for her if we could get it to fit. Because talk about a heavy use watch for her. Um, I wonder if she's still watching. Maybe she can chime in. Kevin's in the, Kevin D says, give Lance a good number on the 005. He'll take it off your hands. I don't know if Lance wants the 005. I don't know if he wants the 005 or not. Uh, let's go back to the e inbox here. And uh, we're going to look at these earrings. Uh, yeah, very classy. Very, very classy. I, I have no, no problems whatsoever with those earrings. And I'm assuming that latch works pretty good so that they, they won't get lost. Um, yeah, I think a very classy, simple, not too big of a hoop. I, I, I think those would be cool. Yeah, I think any lovely young lady would appreciate those. That's what I'm going to say, and I'm, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. 
Uh, let's see. Um, agree that Bitcoin has been positively correlated with equity markets lately. I'm also thinking it will go down with the equities, but I'm often wrong about such things. But actually, it's been performing better recently. It's outperformed the stock market, and uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's it's rebounded nicely. Uh, if you if you compare the two this year, the uh, Bitcoin has outperformed significantly. Uh, most other assets, including gold, uh, the stock markets, pretty much outperformed everything. Of course, real estate, uh, pretty much everything. So now, if it pulls back, that can all change. But we'll, we will see. It's always exciting times with Bitcoin. Or sell your 005 to Lance for 2K. 2000? I don't think I'd sell it for 2000. I think that might be a little bit too low. Uh, you serve. Uh, Date is the 34 millimeter day chest. Okay, it's 34 millimeter. I'm third ever owner. It was bought in 91 from a city 30 minutes from where I live. It was a gift from Coca Cola to a longtime employee. The original owner never wore it. Okay, Eduardo. The second owner has only had it since January of this year. Oh, very interesting. <clears throat> very interesting story. Do send photos when you get it, when you receive it. Do send some fresh photos. And Chi Town's in the house. Craig, how about a giant 904L stainless steel ring to jam onto my septum? Do you approve? <laughs> yeah, I think we'd pass on that. Um, and uh, David Williams is in the house. He says, What do you think of the OO at Lance? He's asking Lance. What do you think of the 0059 f Let's bring it up on the screen here. 005 is the GMT stunner there with the red hand, for those who are not aware. David Williams, I like it, but I'm not really in the market for a GS. Yeah, he's holding out for a Rolex. Rolex. Uh, Bu serve is in the house. And David says, okay, are you a financial advisor? I hear Bitcoin is only for the wealthy people that can afford to lose at all high risk. Um, no, I'm not a financial advisor. I have owned Bitcoin for many years, and I, and I am a, a Bitcoin bull. I'm a, I think that it could solve a lot of the world's problems. Yes, it's high risk. Yes, it could crash to zero. Do I think that's going to happen? No. Otherwise, I wouldn't have a significant amount of my net worth in uh, in Bitcoin. Now, I, it wasn't a significant amount of my net worth at the time I bought it, but it has outperformed all my other assets by a great deal. And so I do have a significant amount in Bitcoin at this point in time. And I'm sticking with it. I'm not selling my Bitcoin. And I don't plan on ever selling my Bitcoin. So that's what I'm going to do. And no, this is not financial advice. This is just what I'm doing. I talk about on this channel, I talk about what I do or what I would do. Like if somebody shows me a watch or something, I say, okay, I, I, I say, okay if I was the one considering it, what would I do? So I'm not really telling that individual what to do. I'm saying it basically if I was in their shoes, what would I do? Like Lance, when I saw the watches he had, okay, which ones, if I had those watches, which ones would I sell? What would I keep? Now, obviously, he can do whatever he wants, but I just give advice as to what I would do, which I think is the only fair way to do it. Um, what's the... What's that point-and-shoot camera you're using there? Oh, this one right here. This is a Sony RX100 Mark IV, I think. Sony RX100 Mark IV. That's that camera right there. <clears throat> and I used to have it out of, the, out of the shot around the corner. Then I'd have to reach further. Now I figured I don't... I don't mind having it in the shot. It doesn't really harm things that much. And this way I don't have to reach as far to show a close-up of the watch. Um, let's see. I paid 3K shipping and would love to do a live unboxing. Okay, super. Um, 
I will email you back, Eduardo, my, um, did you send me an email? Uh, here it is. Yeah, you, you, you emailed me the photos. So I'm going to send you back my, my uh, Skype. So, so you will know. And then you can absolutely Skype into the show and show us that puppy. Show us that puppy when you get it. And yes, treat us to the unboxing. That would be super cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, you say Rolex like Goldberg. Well, actually, he he copied Archie. I think Archie started that. So Goldberg just copied Archie, as far as I know. You sure about that, Craig? I could wear my stainless steel investment medal in my nose. <laughs> there you go. Eduardo, I am looking forward to it. Okay, Craig, how much should a person aim for in terms of net worth? David Smith. Uh, you are a holder, Craig. Hold on for dear life. Yes. And I don't even get nervous anymore. I mean, the first couple of years, I would get kind of nervous when we'd have a big run up and a pullback. But now it's like old hat. I don't even, it doesn't even bother me. It can shoot up, you know, 80% come down 50% or shoot up 50% come down 80%. It, it's all, all in a day's work. Doesn't bother me one bit. So, yeah. Um, let's see what else. Uh, oh, oh, uh, and uh, net worth. Let's, uh, let's, let's, t let's tackle that. Cause that's a really good question. I think what you should aim for, oh boy, here I go yawning again. Oh, <clears throat> I think what you should aim for is having enough of a nest egg, enough investments, if you will, so that you can live off of half of the return that they generate. In other words, half of the income that they generate, you can live off half of that. And then the other half, you can just keep your nest egg growing. You can just plow that back in. And that way your nest egg keeps growing, right? I think that's a good rule of thumb. So, so let's use an example. Let's say you have a million dollars and let's say that you can earn 6%. A 6% would be $60,000 a year that you'd be earning on that million dollars. I'm just throwing out some numbers here. So if you can live off of half of that, if you can live off of 30,000 and keep plowing back the other 30,000 back into your nest egg so your nest egg keeps growing then I think that's a good way to operate I think that's a good way to operate keep growing that nest egg that would be that would be what I would do that is what I do actually I even spend less than half of the nest I kinda just keep the nest egg growing I don't touch any of it I keep adding to it So that's just me, and I don't sell any of my Bitcoin either. As a matter of fact, I've been adding to it. So, um, uh, so yeah, that, that should answer your question, David. <clears throat> what kind of income do you want? And so that'll tell you how much net worth you're going to have because that, that net worth is what generates the income, okay? Whether it be in real estate or whatever it's invested in, it should be generating income for you. A good financial advisor can go over all this with you, and you should definitely talk to a good financial advisor. Uh, let's see. I am not a financial advisor either, but I do limit my exposure to only as much as I'm willing to lose. Your exposure in what? You mean Bitcoin or stocks or what? Everything's got risks, right? It's okay for Lance to do what... Is it okay for Lance to do what he wants? <laughs> well, yeah, he can do whatever he wants, but... It might not be a good idea to do whatever you want if whatever you want is self-destructive, right? Uh, people can do a lot of things, but if you do things that are self-destructive, that's not a good uh, good plan, not long-term at least. Uh, happy to share the unboxing. It's like Christmas, says Eduardo. There you go, absolutely. Lance can do what he pleases, Willie, but if he wants to step up to a Rolex, then he can't do it by getting it distracted with buying more affordable watches. I agree. I, Willie says, I can't watch Archie. Hmm. I wonder why not. Why can't you watch Archie? Archie is the definition of a watch snob. 
says Lance in the house. Yeah, but the problem with him is he 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 doesn't go for the best quality. You know, he he uh, he eschews Grand Seiko and and chooses lower quality watches. See, he could have an 002. He could have an 002. He could sell a couple of those Calatravas and easily get an 002, right? And then and then he could truly be a snob. Yeah, when you got an 002 on wrist, right? You can really be a snob. <laughs> you ain't going to bump into anybody else with an 002 on wrist, although we did have somebody watching yesterday live that, that owned an 002. Uh, but you're not going to bump into them in real life, that's for sure. You might bump into somebody with a Calatrava on their wrist in real life, but you ain't going to bump into anybody with an 002. And Kyle is in the house, and he gives a high five to Carlos. Uh, Kyle, what's going on on the West Coast? Anything exciting? Do share in the chat. Do share. And if you want to Skype in and say hi, the Skype line is open. You can always do that. You're always welcome to do that. But it would be interesting to know if anything interesting is going on on the West Coast. Michael's in the house. Craig... How would you rank your watches from most to least comfortable? Have you been converted to being a strap guy? I'll tell you what, this watch is, is I talked about this yesterday. This is the most comfortable watch I've ever worn. It's like it's not even on my wrist. It's just, and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't shift around on my wrist. It just sits right where it is. And it just feels great. Th this strap, when Tim did his review, on this on this watch and talked about the strap he talked about how flexible it is how it feels like it's already broken in you know it's brand new and and the lining how soft the lining is and he was spot on I mean this thing is amazingly amazingly comfortable that's why I think I'm gonna buy that other strap just to have an extra I might even buy another brown one to have an extra brown one laying around just in case because uh, I think I'm gonna wear this thing a lot I, I'm going to wear it in the summertime. I'm going to wear it a lot. I, I, and I think it looks okay with what I'm dressed with right now. I think it looks fine. I don't, I don't think there's a downside. And I've been noticing some, and some TV shows recently and some movies and stuff that I've watched, and especially some older movies. A lot of people wore watches on straps uh, back in the day and with all kinds of, of attire. And uh, I think it's... I'm starting to become a strap guy absolutely i'm starting to become a strap guy i never thought i would the deployment helps a lot because it's very easy to put it on and off threading a strap the way you normally have to do it and all that that's for the birds that's i don't don't like that but this deployment makes it so easy to put it on and off it is uh it is pretty freaking cool if you ask me let's see bitcoin and any individual equity position okay there you go Archie is offensive, says Willie, in my opinion. He can be, I guess. And so Lance can do what he wants, but he will face ridicule. No, I don't think we would ridicule him. Well, we might. <laughs> Depends on how you, what you define as ridicule. We're, this is an intervention. I wouldn't call it ridicule. It's, it's, it's uh, a friendly intervention. Uh, and Robert says, I don't like you, Craig. You cost me money. I bought one GS, and now I want another. Uh-oh, watch it. Watch it. You go down that GS rabbit hole, and it can get, it can get expensive. I, I can speak from firsthand, <laughs> firsthand knowledge here. It can get expensive. Yes, it can. Uh, so watch that. Yes, watch that, Robert. I get you on that. Kyle's in the house. Leslie and I are going to Santa Barbara in a few days. We'll do a report live from there if you guys are interested. Oh, absolutely. Santa Barbara's cool. Absolutely, positively lutely. A live report from Santa Barbara. You just fire me an email uh, the day that you're going to do it, and then I'll make a custom thumbnail for the Santa Barbara live report. Um, and I'm planning on doing these shows every day until the lockdown ends and the lockdown here in the social state of Maryland 
right now has no end in sight. So um, uh, that's the way that works. G Town's in the house. AC3 is an entertainer, but his message of buying quality over quantity is still important. Too much emphasis on cliche, overrated status symbols, though. There you go. And Kyle's in the house. We are uh, we are staying with a friend of mine, a local potter, who has lived and worked in Santa Santa Barbara for the last 50 years. Oh, that'd be so freaking cool. Maybe maybe you can show them doing something, doing some potting. <laughs> that would be so cool. Uh, and uh, Joey says the Petek 5196 is gorgeous. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. And Carlos says uh, Kyle Nice, Santa Barbara Bo Botanic Garden is very nice. Okay. And David Williams says, uh, hello, West Coast neighbor. Kevin D says, could you have a custom bracelet for the 002? We've talked about that. We've talked about and I actually broached the subject to to the Stevester. Could that company, that Fope company, that did his bracelet, his really cool gold gold bracelet? I don't know if we could like commission them to build a really cool gold bracelet for this watch. That would be kind of wild. A custom Fope 18 karat gold bracelet for the 002. That might be in the future. Uh, there would be. There would be many that would advise against GS and Bitcoin. Oh, absolutely. Well, there's a lot of people that say that Bitcoin's a scam. It's a pyramid scheme. I mean, it has been predicted over the last 10 years. I've got a link on my website. I've got a page where I talk about Bitcoin on my website. It's been predicted over the last 10 years, I think like 300 times by major media, major media that Bitcoin's dead or dying, that it's finished, finito, right? over the last 10 years. I mean, it's it's died, you know, hundreds of deaths, right? And that's why now we call it the honey badger. It's like, you know, no matter what they throw at it, you, they can't kill it. So it's pretty funny. I think it's pretty cool that everybody, like, condemns Bitcoin and it just keeps on going. It just keeps on working every day, day in and day out. It's never been hacked. The, the Bitcoin blockchain is robust. Nobody can figure out a way to scam it. And it's just... It just works. It just constantly works, and it constantly grows. It constantly gets more people to get involved in it and to buy it, and it just continues to spread around the world and do its thing, and nobody seems to be able to stop it. So it's pretty freaking awesome. Uh, let's see. And as far as Grand Seiko, the most of the people that argue against Grand Seiko, it's just because they really don't know that much about it. It's an anomaly. I mean, I didn't know that much about it until I really, until I got the diver, I got the 231, and then I really started looking into it and, and d digging deeper into it, and now I'm like, oh my goodness. I mean, why would I buy something else? It's like, it's, an, it's like not even a close, not even a close call at this point. Um, Let's see. And he says, your voice is not matching up with your mouth, but it's coming through clear. Well, that's interesting that it's not in sync. Maybe somebody else can, can comment on that. Is that the case everywhere? Let me try these monitors real quick. <clears throat> Testing one, two, one, two, one, two. Whether well, it's in sync locally here. So I don't know if the stream is is screwing it up or what, but it's in sync, in sync locally with the video. Uh, lockdown will be lifted spring, summer 2021. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Are you kidding? Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing if they're going to stay locked down that long. Whoa. I guess we're going to be broadcasting every day for quite a while, huh? What do you guys think about that? The SBGX331 has grabbed my attention. Do you think Steve could get one in stock? It's a uh, JDM watch, so it's a Japan market watch. How do you think I should go about purchasing one? I would certainly talk to him, Michael. I would certainly talk to him. He's going to tell you one way or the other. I, I did buy a Japanese market watch. My first gold stunner that I bought was a Japanese market watch, and I bought it on eBay from a trusted seller, and I got it, and it was really a non-issue. So that is doable. But obviously, there's always a risk with anything like that. But 
buy it, try to buy it from a trusted seller and, and try to buy it with the, with the eBay guarantee, right? Money back guarantee. My channel has videos from the pottery studio, including one of, one of me wheel throwing. Oh, there we go. Kyle in the house. The GS002 retail 25K, uh, what would be all gold with bracelet cost like 45K? I don't think they'd charge that much for the bracelet. I would think it would be like another eight grand or something. That would be my guess. So maybe 32, 33,000, something like that, if they offered it. But, and they do have a, they do have models that have gold bracelets for the Japan market. Uh, and you can check the pricing on those. Um, but that would be about my guess that it would, what it would add to it. Uh, so yeah. Now what Fope would charge to build a custom one, that'd be a good question. But I would think they'd do it for around eight grand. I think they'd be tickled pink to do it. Uh, let's see. How much risk time will the tooth run get this summer? I mean, it'll still get a lot of risk time. Like when I'm out walking and exercising and doing stuff around the place here. I mean, and, and whenever I'm here just doing things around the house, I'm, I'm always wearing it. So, I mean, it's still going to get a lot of wear. But when I go out to do deals or, or whatever, a lot of times I'm going to be wearing the 002. So it's going to be a rotation thing. Uh, uh, check your email. Okay, let's do that. <clears throat> and Lance sent a photo of the 5136. And that is a beauty. That be a beauty. Absolutely. I, that's similar to that other watch we we showed that had a bracelet, but it had crown guards. Now, I'm not a fan of a complicated Patek. It just, to me, it just makes the dial busy and hard to read. And so for me, it'd be a non-starter. But for somebody that's into that, absolutely, that's a stunner. That could be an absolute stunner. Stunner alert on the channel. Uh, let's see. Um, to me is fine. Craig, are you are your DuPont pens fountain or ball, ballpoint? I've got two and they're both ballpoint. Kyle Jett, do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, he does have a YouTube channel. Um, he does uh, indeed. Uh, let's see. NSYNC here seems fine here, says Tim. Refresh all good. Okay, here. And David Williams says voice audio is in sync for me. You know, it's amazing that we can even do this. I mean, that that YouTube gives away this bandwidth for us to stream for like an hour, hour and a half, and, and you know, in 1080p quality, and they host all of this stuff for free. I mean, it's just insane. The amount of, the, the, the amount of, of bandwidth they give and the amount of storage it's just an insane amount of videos that are uploaded like every hour to YouTube. I mean, it's insane. And how they can possibly, they just buy hard drives, right? How they can possibly store all this stuff and make it work is beyond me. I have to take my hat off that they can even do this. I remember back in the day, I remember the first iPhone that recorded video. When, you know, the first one didn't do video, right? I remember when they came out and they and they finally had video built into the iPhone. And then I remember when they came out with iMovie for the iPhone where you could actually edit video on the iPhone. And I mean, look how far we've come. You know, you can freaking live stream. Are you kidding me? Uh, ViewServe says, even if they end lockdown, unemployment is too good for some to go back. Maybe this is an opportunity for teenagers to get back into entry-level workforce like they used to. Good point. Um, my channel is my name. There you go. And not much content, but it's there. Okay. Kyle Matthew Jet. All right. And horse. I have two nice Rolexes. Just bought a G-Shock. Okay. And I think I like it. Wears pretty damn good for a sub $100 watch. Well, there you go. It sounds like a nice beater for you. David Williams gives a thumb up. 
thumbs up to somebody. And Horse G-Shock is a, is a great, honest tool watch. I have the DW5600. Uh, let's see. Uh, which G-Shock did you buy? Okay. <clears throat> uh, tch -tch -tch, Craig, briefly run through your health care habits. How to stay looking young. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. Um, I don't know that I look young, but <laughs> uh, yeah, healthcare is not that difficult. I don't think. I, I think it's a lot easier than 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 you would think. And I will tell you, I will give you the 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 what I do. All the GS and Versace straps I see are put on backwards for some reason. Is that the case with yours? People would say that this is backwards, but I love it. I love it the way it is because it, when you use the deployment clasp, it works very naturally, you know, just like my other 231. So everything works great. So I, I wouldn't reverse it, but some people reverse it. I love this one the way it is. Um, let's see. Red, red Casio, uh, new octagon one. It's much thinner than the usual hockey puck. Oh, that sounds good. Um, they must uh, be making a poo load of money off ad revenue and selling user data. I don't know that they can make that much. They, I mean, they're, I, I think YouTube might be a lost leader for them. I think they make most of their money on AdWords on the Google search, but I, I don't know that how they can possibly be making much money on them. Um, because I know how much money I get as my cut on videos that I monetize it ain't that much and and you know they get their portion but um, my gosh they're buying a lot of hard drives folks uh, let's see um, like the long end of the strap is on the top end of the watch out of the factory um, well yeah this the long end is towards me okay on here towards my body which I like. I'd rather have it towards me. And Steve pointed this out. Then if it's on the other side, it's pointing towards whoever is out there, right? I'd rather have this clean side on the outside and the, the strap on the inside. So I absolutely understand why Grand Seiko does it the way they do. And I think they're right. I think they're right on another thing. They're right. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else? Craig... Don't be too humble. You look good. Our wags in the house. Um, well, thank you, my friend. Talk about somebody who looks good, and you you should really get health advice from our wags and financial advice because he's very successful on both uh, uh, ends of the spectrum here. All right. So here's the deal with health. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> Eat a low-fat, high-fiber diet. Don't eat processed foods. Eat foods that are very high in nutrition. I'll give you some examples. A sweet potato. We've talked about this before. Walnuts. Almonds. I make my own almond milk. Okay, I use almonds. I use dates. And I use a little bit of vanilla flavoring. And... I make almond milk out of that. That's it. I don't put anything else in there. The, the, the dates give it enough sweetness, and the almonds give it good taste, and almonds are very good for you. And then I make oatmeal out of that. And in the oatmeal, I sometimes put an apple. I cut it up real fine. I peel it, but I cut it up real fine. I put it in there. I cook that oatmeal, and it makes a great meal. It's very good for you. Now, sometimes I'll put a banana in it, but either one works. Uh, let's see what else um, half an avocado every day and that that goes on my sweet potato dish usually and sometimes I'll have fish with that maybe some salmon maybe a little bit of chicken not a lot of meat but and maybe even a couple of eggs with that uh, mix it up a little bit uh, let me think what oh black beans goes in that dish black beans very nutritious. Everything I've mentioned here is nutrient dense. A lot of nutrition. A tomato goes in there. A nice ripe tomato goes in the in the dish that I make. So if you eat foods that are very high in nutrition and low in fat and not processed, 
In other words, you don't eat white bread, right? Uh, you don't eat pasta. Uh, you, get, you stay away from those processed foods and you eat things that are very, very nutritious, then your body feels like it's got the nutrition that it needs and you tend to not overeat. Okay, so that cures the obesity problem, right? That plus exercising regularly, I exercise about two hours a day, sometimes two and a half to three, but at least two hours a day. Uh, don't drink, don't smoke. Uh, be careful who you hang around with. Don't hang around with a bunch of losers. Uh, what else? Um, get a lot of sleep. Get plenty of sleep. Good quality rest. Uh, don't take any drugs. Don't take any medications, any prescription drugs, anything. Stay away from those quacks and don't let them pump you full of drugs every time they turn around. I don't, I don't get injections for uh, viruses. I don't get a flu shot. I wouldn't get a flu shot for COVID-19 if they invented one. I stay away from those freaking quacks, okay? So what's that? How's that for radical advice, folks? Let me know in the chat what you think about that radical health advice that I just gave. By the way, I'm not a doctor, and, this, and, and do not do as I do. Do whatever you want, but I'm just telling you what I do. So there's that. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, I'm going to have to wrap this puppy up. When is the next broadcast of Strap Talk? That's a good question. That's a good question, Willie. Probably same time, same bat channel. We're pretty consistent. Craig, does your 005 have a see-through case back like many GS course? No, it does not. No, it does not. It's more a sports slash travel watch and so they forego the the clear case back and they gave it a screw down crown and the crown guards it's more for like a heavy use piece as is the 231 next to it that's a heavy use heavy duty piece so there you go um uh, let's see. Craig, do you drink lots of water? How much per day? Tap, filtered, or spring? Many say the key to staying healthy. I don't drink a lot. Um, every morning, <clears throat> I drink uh, basically, you could call it fresh squeezed orange juice, but I wouldn't call it that way because what I do is I, I peel the oranges, I put them in my Vitamix, and I totally grind them up so I'm not losing any of the orange. I'm eating 100% of the orange, right? And so that's the juice I drink in the morning. And sometimes I have some pineapple in with it, but sometimes it's just orange. And so I drink a, a pretty decent sized glass of that. And then I chase that with maybe another glass of, of H2O. And that's my breakfast. That's all I have for breakfast. And then, uh, everything I eat has a high moisture content in it so therefore I don't have to drink as much H2O obviously I drink here while I'm doing the broadcast and I'll drink usually a full glass before the broadcast while I'm doing some exercises I'll be drinking some if I'm doing my curls my arm curls or my push-ups or whatever I'll be drinking some H2O while I'm doing that and then I'll be drinking some during the show so that's maybe a glass or two more of H2O. And then I might have a glass sometime later on in the day, but that's about it. And I don't eat, I don't try to, I try not to drink much H2O right before a meal or with a meal. Because that'll dilute your stomach acids and you won't digest as well. So I'll drink, I, I try to drink like at least a half an hour before the meal, before I actually eat the meal, as opposed to like during the meal. So there you go. That's what that's what I'm doing. Uh, do you get blood work done? No, 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 Kevin. I don't go no, anywhere near those quacks. And my pulse is very low. My blood pressure is very low. Um, yeah. So I stay the heck away from them. I'm not going to help them put their kids through college by getting on the program with those guys. Uh, let's see. Um, 
R. Wag says, Tim McDonald, his father is in his 90s. Yeah, my dad's in his, in his 90s, and he doesn't take care of himself that well at all. <laughs> he overeats, and he's very sedentary. He's the opposite of me. So he'll probably dance on my grave. He'll probably outlive me. That's probably how that'll work. Um, Robert's in the house. I like fasting. Okay, there you go. And Jaden says, Craig, you're spot on almost everything. Hope you never go back on Archie's Loser Bunch channel, <laughs> Jaden. And now, yeah, I don't think I'll be on there anytime soon. Uh, Omega deployment clasp have no keepers, and the long end is tucked on the inside of the strap through the clasp. There is no excess strap visible. On that is a good way to do it. That's basically the way um, the, uh, the Apple Watch does with their rubber straps. And that is a good solution. Yes. But this one works good. And I don't know if that one ends up being thicker on the wrist, the Omega style, or or this is. But I, I have no I have no problem with the way this one functions at all. Don't really see a need to change anything on that end. Let's see. All your dietary protocols, protocols sound great except for peeling the apples and sweet potatoes. There's a lot of nutrition in the peels. I've heard people say that, but I'm not so sure about that. Uh, the, the, they spray the apples with a lot of stuff, and I, I don't know. Maybe you'll get some nutrition out of those, but I'll tell you what. I get so much nutrition as it is with the things that I eat. I also, when I go for my long walk, sometimes I eat some uh, peanuts, and I buy the ones that are out of Virginia, not ones like out of Mexico or something that have like blight on them and stuff. Have a, a what do they call it? Um, uh, anyway, I don't know that I can't I, I can't remember what the what the actual problem is with peanuts that that they they get on them. But uh, you got to be careful with those. But if you get good ones. Um, they're very nutritious. So everything I eat has so much nutrition that I'm so far ahead on the nutrition side of things. I think I'm good. Uh, Craig, how often do you see a doctor? Never. Never. I don't go near those quacks. Don't go near them. Don't need to. When you're healthy, you don't need to go near those those puppies. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, Air Toad, I really enjoy the skins. Usually put olive oil and salt garlic before baking okay there you go and see sweet potatoes the skins aren't that great usually but anyway um craig what's your buying advice for an iphone i say buy the one with the newest chip i would always buy the top of the line phone yes and then i keep it quite a while i've got an iphone 10 and i will probably keep it for another year And David says, we drink lots of water here in the desert. There you go. And also, if you drink alcohol, you got to drink more water because, of course, alcohol de dehydrates you. So there you go. But again, David, if you eat a, a lot of foods that have high moisture contents, like you snack on an orange, for example, you know, then that, that rehydrates you also. So it depends on what you, what you snack on uh, as far as how you'll dehydrated you'll get. Some people eat orange and banana peels. <laughs> Yeah, some people are kind of strange. Yeah, that's the way I would put that. Now, the white portion, when you peel that orange, that white person, that's where a lot of the vitamin C is. So, yeah, you want to eat that. Do you take multi multivitamins? No, generally speaking, I do not. No, you do not need those if you eat right. I'll sometimes take some uh, B, is it B12s? They taste real good. I'll sometimes do a B12 thing. But yeah, not not a lot, not not big on on the pills. I bought an iPhone 6s Plus because it's the last with an audio jack. I hear you on that. That's a good point. My advice is the newest chip with lesser hardware, older chip with greater hardware. Okay. Um, yeah, I would just buy the top of the line phone. There's not that much difference in price between them, and, and if you're going to keep it a while, I think it's well worth having the best. Of course, that I'm, you know, when I brought my first cellular phone, it was thirty-five hundred bucks for the phone, right? So, to me, like fifteen hundred dollars for a phone or whatever the top of the line iPhone is, is like peanuts compared to what I used to have to pay for phones. 
So there's that. And don't even ask me how much the trunking phone was when I had a when I had, when I had a a, a, a Motorola uh, trunking phone in in one of the Mercedes. Don't even ask me how much that puppy cost. And it was a sin. <clears throat> so there's that. Uh, Okay, we're going to wrap this puppy up. We've been going for almost an hour. Oh, this stunner is stunning. <laughs> Jeez. When I, when I look at the 002 and the way the light plays off the markers and the, and the, the domed crystal, the, the way the light just dances off everything, and the gold, I mean, my gosh. <laughs> I wish you guys could see it. I mean... And and with that uh, with that uh, textured dial, that snowflake dial, I mean, and just the shape of it, just the shape of everything, the way the bezel is, works, and the crown, the size of the crown, and the look of the crown. Here, I gotta let's see if you guys can look. I mean, it's just freaking amazing. It's just absolutely stunning. I, I have to say, our wags, I, this is more stunning than my day dates ever were. I, I have to tell you that. I have to be honest here, folks. This thing is absolutely, positively stunning on wrist. You wait till you see it in person. You're going to be like, oh, my God. OMG is what you're going to be saying. Uh, let's see. I'm considering moving to Tucson, Arizona, somebody says. So there you go. And David says, Las Vegas. Um, heard Tucson is nice. Arizona, a good state in which to live. There you go. Craig, doesn't sound like you drink coffee. No, I don't. I don't drink coffee. Any soft drinks? No, I don't. No, no soft drinks. Now, I will, like if I'm at a party with, with Steve or something like that, I'll drink like a Coke. But no, I wouldn't drink Coke Zero. Um, I would drink a regular Coke. If I'm going to go that way, I'm going to go all the way, right? And just like pizza, you mentioned pizza. If Bree and I go to, to Costco and we share a pizza or something back in the day when you could actually sit there and eat, right? Then I would get a pepperoni, half pepperoni, and she would get half with everything on it, right? And I would eat the half with the pepperoni on it because, like, on a pizza... I don't want to try to make a pizza into a salad. A pizza ain't a salad, right? I'd rather have like a meat eater's pizza, right? With sausage on it and everything, right? So if I'm going to go off the wagon, if I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go all the way, right? If I'm going to have ice cream, I'm going to have a big bowl of ice cream, right? But I don't keep any of that stuff around the house. I don't eat any of it regularly because I enjoy all that stuff. I would eat it, right? Uh, but it's nice to occasionally just have a treat and just go all out like the subs that I'll get at Hoffman's Market. I mean, you know, that occasionally you'll do that sort of thing. And But that's not my staple. That's not what I would normally be eating day in and day out. And that's what matters is what you eat day in and day out. It doesn't matter if you occasionally eat something else. It's not going to kill you, right, having, having some fried chicken or whatever, right? It's not going to kill you, but it's just what you, you don't eat that every day and then you'll be fine I think so Lance says Craig I know that you made the review of this watch a long time ago but do you still have your Pro Diver 9937 no I sold it but that was a decent watch and if you get a good copy of the 9937 they're a pretty cool watch solid in links and so forth uh, pretty pretty cool watch uh, whiskey. No, I don't drink anything, but anyway, the, the, there you go. Our wags. Craig, you got to get a, a tan on your wrist arm. The 002 would even stand out even more. <laughs> I'll get a little bit of sun as the, as the season progresses here, but I try not to get too much sun because that can cause problems too. Uh, so David's in the house. He says, uh, uh, our wags, you have a point. You have a point RE, a tan. Yeah, I'm kind of light complected, so I don't usually get too much of a tan. Um, and like I say, I have to be, I, I can't get too much sun because I, now somebody said, have you ever gone to the doctor? I have gone and had a couple of things removed from, from 
skin cancer, but not the not the dangerous malignant kind, you know, fortunately. But I have had a couple of things had to be removed because I used to spend too much time in the sun, you know, playing tennis, and we, we pay the piper for that. So that is a problem, uh, getting too much of the good thing, too much of that sun. You want to get some to get that vitamin D, but you don't want to overdo it. Okay, we're going to wrap it up. It's been an hour. It's been just like that. It's been an hour, hour and one minutes. Please click subscribe. Click subscribe and click the little bell. Click the little bell. And I'm going to eat. And you guys are going to eat. And we're all going to do this again. We're going to rinse and repeat. Thanks for watching.